Welcome back to another guitar session. Today we're talking about introduction to fingerstyle guitar. And it's a very simple but very deep session. And this is one of those that we want to uh, be able to sit around and uh, just mark, you know, bookmark it and then come back to it and, you know, pause and rewind and do all of that stuff so that we can, if, if we're really interested in fingerstyle, um, enjoy it and, be, and become proficient and really comfortable. So we're gonna start right away with the D chord, two chords, maybe three chords, and then we have the trusty metronome set for 60 beats per minute. So those of us who have been here for other guitar sessions on this channel, you kn we know that frequently we'll set the guitar metronome to 60 beats per minute, and we'll usually do one attack per minute per beat. Not one attack per minute. I guess that would be, you know, pretty slow relatively speaking. So we've got this really nice forward roll. And you'll notice that we're gonna cover some techniques here today that maybe you know, maybe you don't know, uh, maybe you don't um, have in the arsenal yet in the kit bag. So it's just a simple forward roll, but it's really important to know how the right hand is going to be. The, the I split this up mathematically from the elbow it's really simple math, so don't worry. Uh, if I can do it, you can do it too. So we have this elbow and this wrist, you know, for lack of better terminology, and then we're gonna meet in the middle. That's a general general spot, you know, a, a balancing spot for the, uh, you know, the pivot to rest on the top of the guitar here, this little piece right here. And we're just gonna hang out up here and not really move it around a whole bunch um, but just be aware that we can telescope to reach, you know, uh, and we can retract to um, withdraw our, you know, to get a little closer to the bridge to get a, a brighter tone. So this can move around, but as, you know, the general starting point is halfway between the elbow and the, and the wrist. And we're starting one attack per beat with the D. And D major is one of the most accessible chords on the guitar. And this is a great way to warm up if we haven't warmed up yet. I'm not going to walk us through that, per, that process today, but just be aware that if you want to just kind of come from the crazy guitar world or just cr the crazy life, you know, the day in the life, that, the, the, the lives that we live can get really fast and really, uh, you know, whew, um, exciting pretty quickly. And that's not always conducive to a learning environment on the guitar, so that's, this is something that we can use to you know this approach to the guitar is a way in to a, it's a warm-up to practice so the other chord we're using today is the B, uh, the E minor and the E minor is just a forward roll again low E and then open G, B and high E strings. So the D chord is one, two, top four strings, open, two, three, two. And what I'm trying to do is really focus on that click. And some fingers will rush and other fingers won't. It might have something to do with you know, the length of the fingernail, the hardness of the callus on the end of the fingertip. But it's just one of those things we stick with. Um, and eventually we become and synchronized to the metronome if we practice it long enough. You can hear my time is all over the place this morning, but yours is better because you're really listening for where placement on each note is. So I'm going to give you a second so you can really dial in your ears and listen to how I may be on or I may be off. I just want you to know that I've been playing guitar for a long time and maybe you have too or maybe you're just starting out. But to uh, for the interest of clarity or transparency, this is something that get that finger to pick through the note exactly at the same time that the metronome clicks. 
can be a real challenge. And I want you to just be able to observe this for a second. So I'll stop talking and you can observe whether my fingers are exactly in line with the click or not. It's gonna require some focus on your part, so it might not be for everyone, but just observe this for a second. I feel like it's pretty close, but I can feel like individual fingers are, are just sort of a little off here and there. And it's important to maintain that breath. Now we have a reverse roll, which is, you'd think if you know how to do a forward roll, you'd think that the reverse roll would be, you know, equally as easily approachable, but it's, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different, world. It's a whole different approach to uh, to life. So we have to rethink our strategies here. We're going to lead now with a, one of the weaker fingers on our uh, fr uh, picking hand, finger picking hand. So one, two, T, Fo. Now we're gonna move on from there to forward, or forward, uh, forward and reverse roll, so. And that changes the meter. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, because we're not playing the starting and end notes where we turn around more than once for this exercise. So we're working on... So once we start to get familiar with this, it becomes something else really altogether. It becomes a really great tool for us to use all over the guitar neck. And then what we're gonna do now is incorporate another chord. We're gonna incorporate the G chord because the G chord has um, you can see when we move from the, the from the D chord, the E chord is. I'm using the same you know the same top three strings for the E minor chord. I'm tracking the bass note with the thumb, and, the, and that's important to track the bass note with the thumb. It's also pretty important to be in tune. So we have this nice tracking motion with the thumb, and then we move to the G chord. We're still using the top three strings with the right hand, and with the index, middle, and ring fingers. Top three strings, and then the thumb is playing the bass note. So we're using the forward roll, and then the reverse roll that we, both of those rolls we're familiar with now. We have a combination roll that's in three, a triple meter, one, two, T, two, two, T, and these musts begin slowly. If we have the patience to start slowly, we can build strong foundations. And those strong foundations are the same for everyone. The strong foundations are strong foundations regardless of who the player is. It could be Sir Edmund Hillary doing a uh, one step above, you know, taking one step above the uh, death zone. And, and after each step, I have to take a rest because, you know, it took all of my physical energy and mental powers to uh, make that one step happen. So we're going to take a rest and call it rest step. But we're still moving forward, right? So it's not really that kind of race, you know, we're still building strong foundations. 
I don't want to glamorize or sensationalize that this happens overnight for anybody. Because it doesn't, you know. That's the joy of this part of music is the daily practice. And getting to make joyful noises every day. We have to look forward. We have that to look forward to. We're taking one, two, three, one, two, T, one. Taking it for a spin around the track. And you know, some corners are greasier than others. So we have to be a little more careful and a little, a little bit more prepared to take the to go into the corner, right? You know, you just don't slam into every corner. You have kind of have to know, you know, from which chord I need I need to know which fingers exactly I'm going to use between the D and E minor. So I'll practice the transitions between those chords a lot so I get all of those chords, you know, basically they're the transitions from one chord to the next are as easy to accomplish as um, breathing air, you know. Uh, you know, unfortunately that's pretty easy for most of us. So we have this nice, you know, I've got three chords so I probably should practice the, the transit from the transitional process from every chord, you know. To the next one. So now what we're gonna do is add a little a little bit more detail. So I don't know if you're still watching, this is definitely for you. So you, just a quick review, we've gone through a forward roll and at 60 beats per minute, that's what this sounds, oh, that's what this sounds like at 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four right and then so now we've done a reverse roll which sounds like this at 60 beats per minute one one two t four one two t four and then we have the combination roll which is the forward into the reverse roll which puts us into a triple meter because typically what we do is exercise we employ these, this is a really important thing to know about. This finger doesn't, you know, it has a place, definitely, but most of us start here with even fingers one and two, or one and two and three, and then the thumb, and then we get that that grip sort of working for ourselves, right? And the important thing is to have all of these fingers sort of on the same plane, and the thumb operates from, the thumb operates here from, uh, you know, the wrist all the way to the, the tip of the thumb, and that app operates as sort of a wand. It moves itself, you know, basically um, as one unit, you know, for the most part. And we have this nice forward roll into a, a reverse roll. We'll call it, which we'll call a combination roll. Can turn this into something else, a little more complex. And this is what I was talking about just a moment ago. We'll slow it back down. This is a very standard sort of right hand picking pattern that you would find in a lot of classical uh, guitar studies, beginner guitar studies, and advanced, you know, advancing techniques as well. But we start with the thumb. We're on the D chord still. We can start with the thumb, index, middle, back to index, and then ring and back to index and back to middle again. And then that starts the pattern over. So thumb, index, root, forward roll, and then go back, and then, and then basically stir the pot. So we've got this leap between index and ring fingers. Right, so there's a really cool pattern happening there. And the this idea here is to get these notes to live. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow we play because that's all relative anyway. It doesn't, none of that matters. Are we making wholesome tone? Are we enjoying the experience? 
If those answers are yes, we'll be lifelong guitar players. If we're beating ourselves up about or not recognizing whether we're making good sounds or not, we're not, you know, we might be playing for a different reason. And that's fine too. But now here's what we can do with armed with these techniques, right? And we're not even using the pinky finger yet. That video is coming up for sure. Um, that that introduces us to all kinds of other other things. But we have. Uh, let's see. What can we do with this? Let's see what we can do with just the forward roll alone. Okay. I love this because here's where we can start highlighting melody. So let's highlight the melody on beat number one. One, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So that means that we play the thumb and the ring finger at the same time. Okay, or we could Play it on beat two. One, two, three, four, one. Which means that we're playing that ring finger while we are forward rolling with the index finger. This is a much more complicated thing. And if I make it look like it's not, um, like I don't need a seat belt, uh, then that's, it's just because I've sat around in my farmhouse kitchen in the mornings and doing this for hours. And this has been over the span of years, right? So it's it's not like um, there are so many people who are so gifted at finger style, Pierre Ben Suzanne being one of those uh, gifted players. But there are so many and so we had starting on one and then starting on two. And then we're gonna start on three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You'll see why this is important. Now we could play all of those notes so that they're parallel, like directly over one of the forward rolling tones or we could play them offset. So they could do this or one and two, three, four. So we could do them together or offset. see where we're going with this, what the potential is for this, right? great songs for this if we wanted to learn this
right? So we have that really, there's one more thing that we need to do in order to get right into that. And that's this, we've just got to use that, you know, that basically we're using, no longer really using the third finger. We're just focusing on the index and middle fingers being attached to the C chord now. So we're three, two, open, one, open. And then we have thumb moving back and forth between Let's start this slowly. I know it's hard to just kind of, we want well, like bulldogs chomping at the, you know, at the bit, right at the end of the chain, you know, um, wanting to just run with it. But the strong foundations are so important. And while we're doing this study, we can pay careful attention to the thumb as it moves between the A and the D strings on frets three and two. If I use more, you know, the side of the thumb, you can look at my picking hand thumb, just kind of changing its shape, changing its angle, more or less fingernail, and I ramp my fingernails, so um, I'll show you a picture of those later on. Oh, you can see them now if you want, but I use those fingernail shapes, and I think my thumbnail is a little off today. So we have thumb moving between the A and the D string, and this is the Believe it or not, this can be a, a challenging thing to get together because we have to, you know, remember breathing. We have to remember the thumb has got to reach back to the A and then rest on the smaller string, the D string, and then push through and come to rest on the G string. So we pluck through the A string and then we pluck through the D string and we come to rest on the next smaller string each time, right? And that's how we maintain clean technique. And that clean technique is just so angelic to hear, you know, and feel. And it, you know, I have a, I used to have a music teacher who said the lights shine a little brighter when you're in tune and you're playing, right, you know. And I think that's true. happening here. I'm just going to hang out here on the C at uh, the C at 9 because it sounds so cool. And I can't think of any, you know, better place to sit and hang out and describe a technique. I'm just going to play it so you can keep this pattern repeating while I discuss it. So I've got this thumb pattern that's going back and forth between the A and D, which you are already aware of. Now the melody is happening on one, two, and three, and four, and one, and the and of three, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and four, and one. So I'll try to highlight just that note. We have a note that feeds that note. It's like it anticipates that, which is the open G string. It's the, you know, the glue that holds this whole pattern together. And the index finger keeps making reference back to it. riding a bike you know one day it's like man I'm gonna crash and burn and you do and you take a handlebar in the gut and you're like I'm never gonna ride a bike again but then you know that's not how things work so we get back on and eventually you can ride the bike so one two and three and four and we put all of those pieces together change chords but fortunately the melody 
works through all of that process on the B string. It's got a really great allure because it all, it just keeps, because all of the melody is on one string, it, it maintains that same tone and so we're not listening and being distracted by changing from a wound like a G string and then playing a melodic note on the B string. Everything is done on the, all of the accompaniment, accompanying patterns, you know, the bass line and, and the, the chordal or the, you know, the accompaniment patterns are done on wound strings or the bass region of the guitar, you know, the lower mid bass region of the guitar. all on the B string. So what a brilliant exercise for the guitar. You know, I don't know how many years I've just taken this song for granted, you know, but it really is a masterwork. If you go back and listen to it, the recorded version of it, and really appreciate the mix and then hopefully you can find a version of it that hasn't been remastered. But you get your ears wrapped around that. Yeah, I'm really glad you stuck around and I'm not gonna tie you up today. You know what to do. Watch some other videos. I hope you like the channel. See you next time and until then, happy picking.